Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and in today's video, we're going to go over the four key skills that you're going to need to become a high level player. Now, let's jump right in. All right, so like I said in the intro, in this video, we are going to be going over the top four skills that you are going to need to become a great pickleball player. Now in the game of pickleball, obviously there's a lot of different strategies that go into it and also a lot of different other skills, but I think these are the four main ones that I think most players need to work on. And without these four skills, there's no way that you're going to get to the level that you desire. So whether you just started the game or you've been playing for years, these four skills you can't play without. And as you improve and as you increase your level, all these skills should become better and better and more efficient. So now let's jump right into the first one. All right, so the first skill that you're going to need to become an effective and good pickleball player is you are going to have to hit effective dinks. Obviously, we know dinking is a very, very important aspect of this game, and it could be really simple, but in even higher levels, dinking is obviously very crucial and very, very important. So here you can see me and my uncle dinking back and forth, and one little thing that you'll notice is where our dinks are landing. A lot of players, when they start to dink, it's definitely okay to learn how to hit the ball back and forth over into the non-volley zone. But in high level play, what we try to do is try to force our dinks and force that ball closer to this non-volley zone line. All right, so you'll see both me and my uncle trying to make our opponent make decisions. So that's the most important thing when you're dinking here. The reason why we are trying to force balls towards that non-volley zone line is because that's where our feet are. So if you're hitting towards your opponent's feet, those are the tough balls that they have to handle. They have to make that decision whether to take it out of the air or maybe take a step back or you're gonna force them into a tough half volley or short hop. So you can see us here move the ball around really, really well. Sometimes we're taking the ball out of the air early. Sometimes we have to let that ball drop, maybe take a step back, depending on the scenario and depending on how we read that incoming ball. Remember, your main goal when dinking is to force a low contact point from your opponent. So whether they're taking it out of the air or they're letting it bounce, as long as you're forcing them to hit up on the ball, that's what you're going for. If you're hitting good dinks, you are limiting their attacking abilities, and that is what you need to do to stay in the point and hopefully eventually create something that you can attack on. Hi, if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's get right back to the video. All right, so now let's jump into the second necessary skill that you need to be a great pickleball player, and that is, of course, volleys. Here you see my uncle and I volleying back and forth, and right now we're just doing just some fast reflex volleys at the non-volley zone line. This is a very, very important skill to practice at any level. So this is obviously more of a cooperative drill, and obviously you can make it more competitive by speeding up the pace gradually. A couple of things that I wanna note here, when you're volleying back and forth, you'll see that our take back, which is our backswing and our follow through as we punch or push through the ball, is very, very short and compact. So after every stroke, we get back into a good ready position. And you'll see both of us, our ready position is around navel height, and you'll see both of us slightly favored to the backhand side. If you haven't noticed yet, my uncle is a lefty, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going against a particular opponent. Knowing what hand they are is obviously going to change your targets. So for the majority of these volleys, you can see my uncle and I volleying back and forth to our torso just to get the point going. But another thing that you'll see is us attacking each other's dominant side. So as a right-hander, he would be attacking somewhere on the right side of my body from my right hip to my right shoulder to cause me to chicken wing it a little bit or to hit a tough ball by my right hip. And once in a while, I'll be hitting to his left side because he's a lefty, that's his dominant side and trying to jam him up on that side. High level players will do this all the time. So this is something that you definitely should be practicing when you're volleying and it's good to practice defending it as well. All right, so before we move on, I do wanna mention if you want a 
full workout drill routine that you can do that I think is going to dramatically increase your skills and improve your game, then head on to brionispickleball.com forward slash workout. And what we'll do is we'll send you a custom PDF with all the drills that I do and I use when I'm training for tournaments or just trying to better my game. And I think if you really apply these and practice them, it's really going to level up your game very, very quickly. All right, so now we're going to jump into the third skill, which I think is probably the hardest skill in the game. And this is hitting reset volleys from the transition zone. So when first trying this, I really recommend that you start off closer to that non-volley zone line, still in the transition zone. And as you get better, you can practice this shot further back. Obviously in a game when you are in the transition zone, the player at the non-volley zone should be and will be hitting at your feet. So obviously this skill is super, super important, especially in the 4-0, 4 5 plus levels. Players nowadays with the technology have good top spin shots that are dipping down at your feet and it's really, really important to learn how to handle these. And anytime we are in that transition zone, we want to do our best to just hit a good unattackable ball that's dropping in front of our opponent into their non-volley zone. Notice here that every shot hit from that player at the non-volley zone should be targeting the feet of the player in the transition zone. A couple key things is that when we are in the transition zone hitting the shot, we want to make sure that we're stable and we're not leaning back and we're trying to take that ball early and out in front. You'll see every good pickleball player practice this shot in the transition. This shot is such an important shot, especially when you're making your way through the transition zone after your third shot drop. So obviously the player at the non volley zone line is going to be putting the maximum amount of pressure, trying to hit at the feet of the player in the transition, which I already mentioned. And this is really going to help and develop their fourth shot after the third shot is being hit as well. So it's really, really good for both players to practice this drill. Just switch back and forth and make sure you stay aggressive if you're the player at the non-volley zone. And if you're the player in the transition, just make sure you do your best to try to keep every ball descending down into their non-volley zone, trying to force them to hit up. All right, last but not least, if you haven't guessed it, the fourth and final skill that you're going to need to be a very good pickleball player is the third shot drop. Obviously this shot is talked about so much and I think it could become cliche at times, but really if you are trying to get to that 4-0 level and beyond, if you don't have a consistent and solid third shot drop, it's gonna be very, very hard for you to get better. Why drops are so effective is that it's a slower ball, it's rising up and over the net, and it is descending down towards your opponent's feet. So contrary to popular belief, one thing that you'll notice is a lot of my third shot drops are actually closer to that non-volley zone line diving at my opponent's feet. All right, so when you're practicing your drops, you don't necessarily wanna be practicing drops that are landing short into the non-volley zone. Good drops and good players will force that ball closer to that non-volley zone line and have that ball dipping down towards your feet. All right, again, you can see the player at the non-volley zone is trying to put maximum pressure and this also works on their fourth shot. So here you can see the player at the non-volley zone is hitting swinging volleys and volleys, trying to get some topspin, trying to roll it deep into the court to try to keep that opponent back. Remember, your main goal at the baseline here is to try to force your opponent to hit up by hitting your drop that is descending down into your opponent's non-volley zone. Third shot drops obviously take a lot of precision and a lot of practice. So this is not something you're going to go out in one practice session and master. Okay, I've been playing for a very, very long time and to stay sharp, I have to practice my drops all the time. So I really hope this was very beneficial and you can see how I practice these shots. Remember, at every single level, all these shots are very, very important. I think as players get better and as you move up in levels, these shots just get better and better and hopefully 
your shots will get more and more precise as you move along and practice. Remember, for the full workout plan that I think is really going to level up your game, head on to briones.pickleball.com forward slash workout and we'll email it to you and give you that PDF so that you can get on the court, start practicing, start drilling and improve your game. Thanks so much for watching. For a free pickleball workout routine that is guaranteed to level up your game, head on to briones.pickleball.com forward slash workout. Before you head on over there, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.